Hey bass players, today we're going to be playing Sunflower by Sway Lee and Post Malone. Let's go ahead and get started. First, I'll play the piece for you at the designated tempo of 160 BPM. Then we'll go into a little breakdown of each difficult passage and figure out how exactly is the best way to play it. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. in this song we're mostly playing a supportive role if you see a lot of the piece is just whole notes or notes held out for a total of four beats when we have these notes it's very important to articulate the beginning of the note have a clear beginning but then back off a little bit on the volume so that the other instruments in the orchestra can speak out a little bit more for example the very first note d whole note at mezzo forte well, we could play it full value at full volume the whole time, like this. Or we could articulate the beginning a little more and then back off on the volume to let those other instruments speak, like we said. So always think about what is your role in the piece of music at that time and adapt accordingly. Next, we need to make sure our staccatos are short and separate. This can be a challenge, especially when playing on open strings where our left hand doesn't have control of the sound. So looking at measure 25, we have D staccato notes, four per measure. There are different lengths we can play. We can play these extremely short. We can play them very long. Or we can go for that perfect middle line where the note is short and articulate but has enough room to speak that it doesn't just sound like a scratch. Now how do we do that? Basically we need to set our bow hand on the string and we need to allow the weight of our arm to actually just rest on the string so that after we pull the weight of our arm brings the sound and the string to a complete stop. It's a fine line between allowing tension in your hand to stifle the sound and allowing your arm weight to naturally bring the string to a stop. So let's practice that at a slow tempo. Follow my lead. One, two, three, four. Take a moment again to look at my arm. My elbow is bent. My wrist is also bent. I'm in the perfect position to place my arm weight on the string. Now when I pull, I don't just pull with my wrist or my elbow, right? I pull with my entire arm. The upper arm is moving as well. And then when I stop, I'm doing just that. I'm trying to keep my arm relaxed and just stopping the motion of the upper arm. Let's try that one more time, just on D. One, two, three, four. Nice. At 
measure 33, we finally have the melody to ourselves. So let's take advantage of that and play with the full, beautiful and singing sound. You'll see that our dynamic is forte, coming from a mezzo forte before that. So when we reach 33, we have to get significantly louder than the previous measure. Let's just try that. We're going to play the full measure of 33. But before we get there, we're going to start from measure 32. F sharp, F sharp, E, E, D. Notice F sharp, F sharp, E, E are all staccato. When we land at 33, we're going to play full value and a little bit louder. Let's try that from measure 32. One, two, three, four. Notice how much more bow I'm using at 33. Let's do that one more time closer to tempo. One, two, one, two, three, four. I put a lot more movement, not just pressure and strength, but movement into those full value forte notes at 33. Now you'll notice in measure 34, we have a staccato B and a staccato D. This is part of the melody. Sing the song to yourself in your head. Needless to say, I keep her in check. Those last two notes are very, very short. So let's keep that in mind as we play measures 33 and 34. One, two, three, four. Once again, I'm stopping the sound with the weight of my arm, just allowing it to sit in. One, two, three, four. This contrast between full value notes and the staccato notes is what makes this piece so much fun to listen to. So let's spend some time with measures 33 all the way through 39 to play the entire melody. It's not often that the basses get the melody, so really enjoy it. Let's give it a shot. 33 at a slightly lower tempo. One, two, one, two, three, four. bow we use on our full value notes and how little bow we use on our staccato notes. When we come back to 41, we're dropping back down in dynamic to mezzo forte. Even though we had the cool melody, it's time for us to be a supportive role again and back up on the volume. So make sure to articulate the beginning of the whole note and then get a little bit softer. Finally, at measure 57, we have a huge crescendo. Now, the way the bowing works out, we end up starting here on a down bow. So we have two options. We can either down bow very quietly for measure 57, or we can retake the bow to start at an up bow at measure 57, regardless of the fact that we just came from an up bow in measure 48. Remember, we're cutting from 48 to 57. So if I have an up bow at measure 48, I can do a retake. Now, what did I just do? I pushed up. Now I take the arm weight just a little bit off the string and I move back. My bow is actually still touching the string. You can almost hear it, but I'm just taking my arm weight a little bit off so I can do a retake and be ready for that up bow again. When we start measure 57 on an up bow, we have so much more ability to create an awesome crescendo. Now, how do we really maximize that crescendo? Well, there's a few things. We're already doing a good thing of starting at the tip and getting to the frog. Because our hand is on top of the frog, the sound will naturally get louder as we move from tip to the frog. The two other things we need to think about are weight and pressure. Once again, when we're playing very softly, we might reduce the amount of arm weight we're allowing to go into the string, just being a little bit lighter and more controlled in our arm. So as we crescendo, we want to be a little more controlled and then allow our arm weight and our elbow to just dig down closer to the instrument. One more time, controlled, allowing the weight to come closer to the instrument. Just think that your arm is slightly going limp at your side and that arm weight will naturally go in. The other thing we can think about is pressure. 
Now, when we talk about pressure, we're talking about, yes, a little bit of hand strength, a little bit of squeezing, but really the angle at which our hand is holding the bow. When we're holding the bow like this, there's not a lot of pressure on the other side. But as we twist our wrist towards the instrument, we're really maximizing how much pressure of the bow is going into the string. So as I move, I'm doing three things now. I'm going from tip to frog. I'm allowing my arm weight to sink into the instrument and I'm pushing my wrist towards the instrument so that all that pressure is going right into the string. Let's start at 57 and end. We have a little piece of melody in the last two measures. So let's bring back that full, sonorous, beautiful sound, except for those last two staccato notes. Here's measure 57. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Whew. All right, bassists, great job today. I'll see you in the next video.